Next, Russia two days before voters go to the polls to elect a new president. Prime Minister Vladimir Putin voiced confidence today that he'll be the victor, and he called the massive protest by opposition groups, quote, a good experience for Russia. Margaret Warner has been in Moscow all week, and she filed this report. Vladimir Putin is out on the stump, making a pitch to get back his old job, president of Russia. As the month-long official campaign season here closes in on Sunday's election, the prime minister is favored to win and big enough to avoid a runoff. With all my soul, with all my heart, I am rooting for Putin. Term limits forced him to cede the presidency four years ago to Dmitry Medvedev. But now he's back in full presidential wannabe mode on state TV nonstop as he crisscrosses the country. And he's everywhere here, too, on the banners of an opposition movement that sprouted in a few short months. Thousands formed a human chain in central Moscow last Sunday to call for Russia without Putin. I believe uh, that 12 years of Mr. Putin is uh, too much for, for Russia. Opposition stars mustered alongside ordinary citizens, young and old, in a defiant yet jubilant display unthinkable just a few years ago. Environmental activist Yevgenia Chirikova has blossomed into an opposition leader. It's a clear cue for Mr. Putin that a crook and a thief has no place in the Kremlin, had enough humiliation. For many, that humiliation was epitomized by Putin's bid to return, with a job-flipping announcement by Medvedev last September. Simmering resentment let loose on the Internet. Then suspicions of widespread fraud in December's parliamentary elections blew it open into the streets. We have to stop uh, sitting in our apartments. We have to now do something for, for the political system. We rode to Sunday's rally with 25-year-old interpreter Dmitry Makarov. Never active before, he was stirred to action when social media spread videos of voter intimidation and ballot stuffing. Actually so evident and so arrogant that uh, we thought that, no, that, that's, that's, that's not real, that couldn't happen. But when your friends tell you that, when your friends upload the video to Facebook or they send a photo to Twitter, uh, and you believe your friends, right? Twelve years of Putin power have brought benefits to Makarov and many like him, as Russia's freed-up economy rode atop sky-high oil and gas prices. Now, he says, government needs to catch up. We're not satisfied with how the government works. They are too far behind us, right? We want, uh, we want good service at a restaurant, but at the same time, we want good service at a court. But you don't get that good service, he said, unless you pay bribes. And the same goes for lucrative government contracts. We want laws that would protect uh, regular person. So you mean you want an end of this sort of privileged government class? Absolutely. We don't want to have privileged people. Alleged sweetheart deals for Putin's friends and family have been aired by bloggers like activist Alexei Navalny. Veteran Putin opponents use older style methods to publicize what they say is a deep and pervasive rot. It's, it's, it's wa watches. They have very, very expensive watches. It's a palace on Black Sea. That's One billion dollar cost. Many people understood that he's working not so on Russia, but much more on his personal wealth and his personal uh, 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 good life. Independent politician Vladimir Rishkov was muscled out of parliament after Putin ascended. Putin is not reformist. He's a reactioner. He, he tries to keep the same corruption status quo in Russia. We want real system reforms. Systemic reform of corruption can't come under Putin, believes analyst Masha Lipman of the Carnegie Moscow Center. Corruption is in Russia um, is not a malignant tumor on an otherwise healthy body that can be severed and then the, the, the body can, can live and develop. It's actually the very texture of the Russian governance. People who are close to Putin, who constitute his elite, uh, can expect can rely on the government cover-up if they do something unlawful. Among those affected by that corruption, young professionals like 32-year-old Denis Fedorov. At an art opening this week, he said his American employer loses business because it's banned by U.S. law from paying bribes. 
we cannot do some part of uh, our work. We cannot uh, get some contracts because otherwise we need to uh, give money. And this colors Fedorov's feelings about Putin and his entire rule. What I feel about the government and Putin is that I feel shame. Fedorov's friend Sergei Balandin, baby daughter in his arms, concedes the system is rigged, but he values the stability and opportunity Putin has brought. I'm afraid of disorder. Any change of power threatens economic and political instability. In the elections, I will vote for Putin. The gains of the Putin years ended the turbulence of the post-Soviet 90s and the rubles collapse. Now many Russians are ready to vote their gratitude. Far from cosmopolitan downtown Moscow is this gritty industrial district at Andrei Bondarenko's auto repair shop. The former communist opened his own business after the Soviet Union collapsed. Those were hard early days, but Putin righted things. I support Vladimir Putin. He brought Russia up from its knees. We didn't have enough food then, and now the store shelves are full. The protesters are saying he's too much like a czar. <laughs> he's not a czar, he's a regular guy, a real common man. He's a man of action. Do, do you feel a lack of freedom? <laughs> I absolutely do not feel anything like that. Working class people have lots of freedom. If you remember Russia in the 90s, it was a country with a catastrophic situation in the economy. Putin's well, deputy so campaign manager, Pavel Zenkovich, yes, says millions of Russians enough. like Bondarenko have long memories and know his candidate has delivered for them. What people see in Putin, they see the guarantee that uh, there will be an evolution, but they, uh, will be, uh, that there will be stabi stability. They see in Putin that they won't lose their salaries, that uh, the factories uh, that will, be, uh, will be growing. No other candidate in this campaign can guarantee them. They see no alternative. That's just the point, the opposition says. There is no real alternative in Sunday's election. The Kremlin's election commission permitted only three old faces on the ballot, like the perennial communist candidate Gennady Zuganov. And just one new face, billionaire New Jersey Nets owner Mikhail Prokhorov. Despite his Western-style campaign, he hasn't cracked 10 percent in the polls. Still, he sees an emerging coalition waiting to be led. A year ago, my nomination for presidency was not even possible, but after the parliamentary elections, the situation drastically changed. I will bring together a new political force to unify not only protesters, but those who want real change. But Rishkov says this campaign is a phony competition because the Kremlin stacked the deck. Putin selected opponents himself. So it was selection before election. No one from real opposition was registered. All so-called oppositioners running for elections are more or less managed by Putin and his regime. The integrity of the vote itself is being watched by civic groups and liberal parties who've trained volunteers as election observers. During election day, a team of people, one or two persons, they travel from one polling station to another. Ksenia Sokolova's independent group Golos also runs a website that's compiling allegations of pre-ballot vote rigging. Here they say that uh, the head of administration, he uh, was promoting the candidacy, candidate Mr. Putin and he promised some presents for a good vote. Even the Russian government is installing web cameras in 90,000 voting stations. However that vote goes, Putin will retake the reins of a society that's deeply split between old and new. Putin, of course, has uh, his core constituency, people who are, do not live in big cities, uh, people who um, still share the psychology of dependence, and they rely on the government. On the other side, says analyst Lippmann, is an urbanized middle class increasingly working in the private sector. That split can be seen in Moscow itself, on the solid ice of a windswept lake near Soviet-era apartment blocks, Venyamin Batov was having little luck with the fish, but no matter. What you have been saying, everything you. changes to the better. Look at me. I'm a pensioner. I'm sitting here enjoying myself, and I get my pension on time, and I'm happy. 
His pal nearby isn't quite so happy, but feels the protesters offer him nothing. They are uncoordinated. There are not many people, and there are no leaders with a clear and realistic program. A half hour away, inside a one-time chocolate factory, is Rain TV, an internet and small-scale cable channel that runs live coverage of protests and voices not heard on state-controlled television. No, a chocolate the most, factory. Yeah. Chief producer and newscaster Renat Devlet Gildeev says the fact that his mostly 20 something staff came of age after the Soviet Union but before Putin makes Rain TV different in crucial ways. Honesty, freedom, a feeling of fresh air. Our journalists do not have those mental barriers of inner censorship that tell you what you should say and what you should not. He says they also embrace different values than those celebrated by the Putin era. For the last 10 years, society pursued a concept of happiness that meant a salary that is paid on time, you can go to Ikea once a week to buy a piece of furniture, and you own a Ford Focus car. Now people want more. At the base of the pyramid, you have basic human needs. But at the top is this self-identification that people are now striving for, that their opinion should count. If Putin wins handily on Sunday, how he handles this emerging new class could be crucial to his success. Our team in Moscow will be filing a special online report on Election Day. You'll find that on our website at newshour.pbs.org.